Hello and welcome back to the Blush Studio. Another day, another butterfly. You know how I am. <laughs> so today we're going to do another, it's mostly black and white butterfly, um, but there's some other different color elements to it. Um, unlike what I would normally suggest now, I actually started with the black and kind of worked from darkest to lightest. Um, so that's kind of interesting, just different ways that my um, style and my technique has changed and evolved over time. But a lot of it is still the same. Um, so I did apply some uh, masking fluid. There we go. Had a little brain freeze there. Some masking fluid to the spots, just like I do for all of my butterfly tutorials. And um, if you need kind of some masking fluid tips, I do have a video on that that I'll link down below. Um, but in general, um, I'm just kind of applying the exterior color. And I like to start with the outside and work my way in for butterflies, which is actually the opposite of what I like to do for my flowers. Um, just because usually there's more detail and more things to follow and kind of map out on the exterior of the wings. And then as it goes towards the interior, it's a little more simple. And by starting with the outside, I can kind of establish those details and just kind of bring everything together a little bit more slowly. Now the color that I'm using is my favorite black tone. It's Hematite Genuine by Daniel Smith. It's just kind of a warm black and it has a nice even application, which is really what I'm going for when I'm looking at my watercolor pigments. That doesn't mean to say that you need to have this black in order to get a good color. Um, I often will also add like a little bit of yellow to it or a little bit of yellow ochre, um, just to kind of warm it up a little bit more. Um, but that's just kind of a personal preference thing. So right now I'm just slowly applying that in, um, kind of getting the larger sections um, filled in so it's pretty mindless if you will, like it's hard to mess this up. And one of the big things that I'm trying to do is make sure that it has a nice even coat of pigment across the whole section of the wing because it would look really funny if um, it was patchy at this point. You can see I'm like really fine-tuning things. I am working with a watercolor brush right now. I believe it's my round number six, um, and I'll have that linked down below as well. Just really getting the color in there. See how I'm tapping that back in? Just to make sure it's nice and even. And then kind of once I have the exterior mapped out, I can start to work on the details that are in the interior. And a lot of times those details, especially like the veins, if you will, of the wings will connect to exterior elements. So just like that little section there that I just connected. So for me, it's easier to kind of work from the outside and then just connect those sections. Once I've like established where the certain shapes are, um, to the elements that are on the interior because usually the interior is a little more simple or the exterior is the part that's more complicated. Now it looks like I forgot to add some masking fluid so I'm taking a different brush. Um, I've protected the brush using just kind of a quick trick and I'm applying a little bit more masking fluid to areas that I want to keep that white section. Um, so I, this way when I'm applying the watercolor I can apply it without fuss and later pull up the pull up the masking fluid to reveal the white paper underneath. You can also do this if you want to like apply a wash of color and then apply the masking fluid. When you remove the masking fluid it will mimic it will then just take on the color that was first applied down. If that, that was like a really long way to say if you were to apply color to the paper first and then put masking fluid down then you would see the color that you applied. So you can see that I'm avoiding that area where I put the masking fluid down and that's just to give it a chance to dry. Um, masking fluid is notorious for destroying brushes um, unless you're using kind of a protective element. So I definitely do not want this brush to be ruined. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. 
This is my watercolor brush, which I definitely don't think that you have to invest in crazy expensive brushes in order to have a good painting. Don't let anybody tell you that. Um, a good quality brush doesn't have to be expensive, um, but you don't have to go crazy with it. So I'm testing to see if the masking fluid is dry and it's not yet. So I'm going to keep working on these um, other details until I can go back and fill that in. So the parts that I'm going over but are still coming up white, that's where the masking fluid already is. The difference between a regular brush, if you will, like a standard brush, and a watercolor brush is that a watercolor brush is much softer and it usually holds more pigment and more water. Really that's kind of the main purpose of getting a brush that is specifically for watercolor um, as opposed to a brush that is just for like acrylic or for oils um, because it's just a different painting medium and a different technique that's used. So the nice thing about a watercolor brush is that you don't have to like go back and forth as often and it's really easy to apply a thick wash of color um, or a thick light layer of watercolor, which is what I did on the blue butterfly that's on top of this one. Um, so there are different reasons to have them. If you are a beginner, um, I actually recommend starting with more of like the all-purpose brushes rather than specifically a watercolor brush because that way um, you have a little bit more control. The water in the brush can be really overwhelming and so um, I actually recommend getting familiar with watercolor and like kind of how wet you want your paper to be or your brush to be before you start investing in a watercolor brush. Now right now you can see I'm taking a brush that is just a little bit wet and I'm taking some of the pigment and I'm loosening it around the edges. I'm just softening the edges of the details, like of the black section, in order to kind of pull it out and create the veins that you see within the butterfly wing. Now this is what I did a year ago. If I were to do it over again, I definitely wouldn't do it this way. Um, not only is it not great for the brush and the paper to just like massage it like this, there's nothing wrong with it, but there are easier ways to do this. <laughs> um, what I would do now is I would take a brush that is mostly dry, so just barely damp and add a little bit of pigment to it and kind of add it like another layer. Um, one thing that I struggle with is that I always want all of my transitions to be super smooth. But something that I'm learning as I'm just continuing to grow in my watercolor abilities is that some of the beauty is having that transition visible. And so now if I were to paint this, I definitely wouldn't be doing that massaging motion that I was just doing. And you'll see me do again right there, just where I'm kind of wiggling it back and forth. Again, not a bad thing, but I'd rather not do that than on dry paint. Um, it just kind of, it, yeah, it messes with the texture of the paper. It's really not great for your brush, and this is a more high quality brush. Um, and so I do wanna keep it nicer, um, but it's just not the way that I would practice now, I guess. So I'm continuing to learn. This was a year ago um, from the time that I'm filming this. Um, continue to learn and continue to grow in my own artistic ability, which I hope that you will continue to do as well. And I guess it's fun to see in hindsight how I would change. Now something like this where I'm going in with a pretty wet brush and I'm kind of picking up some of the pigment, that doesn't bother me as much as just the like massaging and kind of creating a texture. Now if you're going for a texture like that, I would probably, I would now, if I wanted to create that texture on my painting, which sometimes I do for architecture, um, I would do it with one of my all-purpose brushes and not my nice watercolor brush. But, I mean, you can see where I did that. See how that softens everything? If you look at and if the wing that's now on top compared to the wing that is on the bottom, it's so much softer and so much more graceful. Um, so that does work. And I'm not saying that if you do that, you're a bad artist or, or you know that you shouldn't do that. But I am saying that now that I've had more practice and experience, I would do it differently. So 
since I have a little bit of that pigment on my brush now from kind of massaging or aggravating the paint that's down there, I can then pull it up on the veins and that's just like a really pretty way to, really a simple way to kind of create that really soft line. It even has like a little bit of a gradient because as the pigment fades going up the vein, it'll be more concentrated at the base of the color and then just get softer as it goes up, um, which I do really like that effect. I like to have a gradient um, or just like something that's a little bit more intentional for all of my lines like this. Um, so if you've seen my other watercolor butterfly videos, then you'll know that one thing that I love doing is either making the line darker close to the butterfly or towards the tips, just to kind of add a little bit of depth and dimension. Um, it makes it a little bit more interesting um, and it also just allows your eye to travel a little bit more and it creates an unexpected pop, if you will. So now I'm taking just a little bit of pigment, and this is how I would do it now. So I've gone in with a little bit of pigment, and I'm just kind of popping that section. And now I'm removing the masking fluid. <laughs> so the masking fluid, um, there's a couple of different ways you can remove it. You can just kind of massage it like I'm doing now. You can take a white eraser, um, a, like a nice hard white eraser, and just rub it against it. Really, you're just pulling it off. I have yet to experience like any pigment or any watercolor that it was on the masking fluid, like scarring my paper, but it doesn't mean it necessarily wouldn't happen. So I do try and be careful, um, but in general you can be kind of aggressive with it. Now I'm going to massage these sections as well for two reasons. Um, one, see how those edges are so sharp and jagged? I really want to soften them up. Um, but also the color that I'm going to be applying over this particular section that I'm working on is going to be very um, muted and so it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Now if you do make a smudge like I just did a moment ago on <laughs> the left wing, um, just add a little bit more water as quickly as you can and you know, mop it up. If you work quickly, um, you shouldn't be like too affected by the stain. Um, but if you don't work quickly, it might become a problem. <laughs> so again, I'm massaging here. Um, and if I were to do it again, I'd work instead with very light layers with a mostly dry brush um, with a little bit of pigment on it, rather than trying to pick up the pigment that is surrounding the shape that I'm working on. But see how it's creating a nice gradient? So like the center of those arches or the center of this circle is much lighter in comparison to the other sections. And it kind of helps to enhance kind of the frills, if you will, the implied frills of this butterfly's wings, like just the little edges, by kind of having that gradient in there so it comes and goes a little bit more softer, a little bit more softly.
All right, so now that I have pretty much all of the edges softened out on this butterfly wing, it's time to go in with some color. Um, so this butterfly does have some color despite its mostly black and white appearance, especially on the tips of the wings. So we're gonna have some fun with that. To start, I'm gonna go in with some ultramarine blue. I'm just gonna apply this to these sections. Now it's kind of a dusty color, so I allowed the black um, to kind of create a gray as I was um, massaging it in. But in order to kind of play up that color a little bit more, I'm actually going to be adding it in small doses kind of around the edges just to kind of give a little bit of color pop and to um, repeat the color elsewhere in the composition. Um, I love doing this. I love to take colors that are already in, you know, whether it's a butterfly wing or a flower or whatever I'm painting and repeat it elsewhere in a way that isn't necessarily realistic but can add a beautiful dimension. So I'm doing that kind of towards the body of the butterfly and just in little ways to kind of help everything to pop. The nice thing about blue is that in so many ways we think of blue as a neutral. So it's not going to be super um, shocking. Like if I were to add like a magenta here or something like that, um, that would be pretty surprising. But having just these little bits of blue um, really helps to add a little bit of visual interest and something that's unique to this butterfly. Um, and to my painting rather than even just a picture of the butterfly um, But it also, you know, it's not something that you would notice right away It's very subtle All right, adding just a touch of blue up here, but it's much lighter um, Here than it is kind of in the lower section. So I don't want to get too carried away all right, after double checking my reference, I am going to add some yellow in. So these are just different yellow sections. For this composition, I use mostly the lemon yellow hue. Um, I did, I think, add in a tiny, tiny bit of either yellow ochre or cadmium yellow, just to kind of help to brighten it up and to like really punch that, punch up that saturation a little bit. But for the most part, it was pure lemon yellow hue and it's just like nice and bright and happy and lively and I really like how it ended up coming in. So here's where I added a little bit of the cadmium yellow just to kind of make it punch a little bit more. And so I'm applying that over the section. Now if I were to do this again I would probably work lighter to darker rather than going in with the black and then trying to add yellow on top but this wasn't a bad way to go about it. Um, I hadn't at this point experimented much with applying the um, masking fluid over a color, so I didn't really want to mess with that. Now for the body of the butterfly, I'm working with that same yellow, but I added more yellow ochre, or I added some yellow ochre, just to kind of desaturate it a little bit. I also think I added some hematite um, genuine, which is the black that we were using. Um, again, like it's just to mature it a little bit and to make it a little bit more saturated. Now here I'm going in with more of a traditional painting method and like kind of a lot of light layers that I'm just building up slowly um, in order to get this body. So a lot of the butterflies that I've worked with have had an almost black body. This butterfly has a very light body and um, it's very, you can tell, like you can see the texture and the fluff in it a lot more than in a lot of the other butterflies I've done. So I wanna go in light layers in order to give that illusion, um, but also just to show the modeling and give it a little bit of visual interest. So especially with something that is different and unique, like um, from butterfly to butterfly, like instead of having a black body or mostly black body, having a lighter body to look at, I really wanted to make sure that I got it right and it was like a showstopper. Now to continue building up this texture with these little bits, I'm just adding a little bit more hematite, um, a little bit more of like the black tone, and a little bit less of the yellow tone slowly as I'm building it up. And that will just, again, continue to desaturate everything and really help with my modeling um, so that it's not too bright or distracting. And here I'm just kind of blending it in. I'm continuing to go back and forth. I'm working with a detail brush. Um, I believe this is my number three. And that was pretty much it. I really love how this one turned out. I love all of the color. I love that it has, you know, like that textured edge to the wings. And then just the unique factor of having a lighter body rather than a darker body. 
If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up, and I will see you with our next butterfly. Until then, happy painting!